So I have been very critical of KD Plasma in the past. In fact, I've called it buggy garbage. I've talked about how it's always buggy for me. It's always causing me problems. And while I really want to like it, I can never use it for very long because it's always pretty buggy for me. Now, I have a certain situation on my hardware where, for whatever reason, Plasma has never particularly cared for this hardware. I don't know what's going on with it. Sometimes it's monitor stuff. Sometimes it's just general crashiness of KWIN. I've had a lot of problems with Plasma over the years. So when I heard that they were moving to Plasma 6, I was both excited and cautious, right? Because I didn't have too high expectations for it because Plasma is this huge thing with a lot of moving features and a lot of moving parts. And I just kind of expected it to be kind of the same business as usual, if you will. So I have been using Plasma 6 now for a month. And I've been using it for about, I used it for about two and a half weeks full time on this machine in front of me. And then I used it on my laptop for another two months or so, or not two months, two weeks. If I said months there, I meant weeks, two weeks, and then two weeks, it's been about a month. I have to say, mildly surprised, mildly, because there's still some things that I have to talk about. But for the most part, this is the most stable KD Plasma experiences I've ever had, which is highly entertaining for reasons that I'll bring up later. So let's just talk about that later. But we're, today we're going to talk about Plasma 6 and my experiences with it. So let's go ahead and jump in. But before we do, if you leave a thumbs up on this video, I'd really appreciate it. It'd really help the channel. So let's go ahead and take a look at Plasma 6 on this main PC that I actually use. If I actually can go to the right scene here. So this is what my Plasma 6 looks like. It's not too far away from what the default looks like. I have changed it around a few times, but recently I reset everything to look like the, the default just so it could look like the default for this video. I've been, it's still using my old color scheme, so I haven't done any of that stuff. And you guys might notice some Grovebox stuff creeping in in terms of theming because I switched to Hyperland after this and got to go to Grovebox finally. And uh, so there's going to be some mixing and matching here. So just ignore that. That's not a Plasma thing. That's just a, a consequence of me having many things installed on my system. So whatever. Let's go ahead and talk about Plasma 6. So first off, let's talk about the good stuff. So when you think about software moving from one version to another, you think that you're going to experience something big, exciting, and overall just, you know, monumental. Plasma 6 is not that. So when I heard they're going from 5 to 6, usually when you see a version bump number, you expect there to be a lot of stuff here. Well, there's not a lot of stuff that's new here. There's a few new things that are really good, but there's not a ton of stuff, whereas if you've if you've used Plasma before, you're going to come to this and think, oh my god, this is something completely new. That's not the case. It's still very much Plasma at its core, which is good. I'm not going to go over every single feature that was added. There are many other videos from other Linux YouTubers who have done that, so you guys can go check those out if you want to see all the features. For me personally, I'm just going to talk about some of the features that I like, some of the things that you know I really didn't care for, and then talk about my overall experience. So, first off, let's talk about the elephant in the room, the floating panel. A lot of people, for whatever reason, really did not like that they chose a floating panel by default. Some people argued that they were getting away from it looking like Windows for weird reasons. Some people, you know, just didn't care for this particular aesthetic. Personally, I didn't care. I like the floating panel just fine, but it's also astonishingly easy to change it. You just, you know, right click on it, click edit mode, and then you can just disable it like that. And, and you know, that's fine. You know, it's very, very easy. And overall, you know, it's just a very minor change to me. It works just like a regular panel. There's just some padding around it now. I will talk more about the panels later because I have some qualms about it, but we'll talk ag again about that a little bit later. So that's the biggest visual change I would say out of the box. And if you're thinking, well, that's not much visual change at all, you're right. It's not a big visual change. And that's kind of the overarching theme of this update. It's not a big change. It's basically 5.28 is the way that I describe it. They just have done a lot of work underneath, which does qualify for the brand new 6 moniker, right? So they've moved everything over to QT6. They've moved a lot of stuff over and done a lot of work on Wayland, which we'll talk more about here in a minute. Most of the stuff that is in this update is under the hood, and you're not going to notice it, or at least you probably won't notice it. So in terms of visual stuff, the, pl the panel is probably the biggest one. The second one is also related to the panel, in that when you go to enter, enter mode, you get this pop-up here. It's more 
tedious for me, I would say, in some cases, but it's also better than what was there in some ways. Let me explain. So, before, when you wanted to set the position, you would just drag the bar or the panel, right? If you wanted to, if you wanted the panel over here, if you wanted the panel over here, I prefer that instead of having to set position and then click an arrow. It just seems less, it seems more manual to me instead of interactive. So the alignment and the width and stuff like that used to be in a menu over here along the side. And I don't particularly care one way or another. I think it's nice that they put it all here in one spot. But this panel here is all new. I will say that Plasma continues to put the add widgets thing literally all over the place. So you can't miss the thing. So if you want to add widgets to your desktop, it's here. If you're in regular, not edit mode, it's here. It's up here. If you click on the bar, it's here. It's so many different places. And I suppose that's good because it means that you can have access to widgets wherever you want it just seems like it's a little bit over excessive but that's they've always done that so that's not anything new another thing that i like and dislike we're going to kind of meld like and dislike here for just a second is that they have completely reordered all of the stuff in the menu or in the, in the settings excuse me Everything here is in a different place. So I hate that it's in a different place because I was used to having to scroll all the way down to get to displays or to search, right? If, if I wanted to, to get to my display settings without, you know, clicking over here and I was in the settings panel, I would go scroll all the way down. That was where displays was. Same thing with audio and multimedia and a whole bunch of other stuff used to be here at the bottom. Now it makes more sense to have all of the stuff for your hardware, your input and output, the stuff that you're probably going to mess around with that the first time you use the settings, probably the most important stuff for settings at the top. Before, at the top was global theming. <laughs> that was what was at the top. And while I personally like theming, the vast majority of people don't spend their time theming the first time they open up Plasma. They want to get their displays running. They want to get their game controllers and their network and all that stuff all running. And now all that stuff is right here at the top, which is great. But if, you've, you're, if you're a you're a long-time Plasma user and you have muscle memory for where the stuff used to be, it can be a little jarring because a lot of the stuff that, were, that used to be down further on the list is now at the top. And you kind of have to go searching for stuff. And stuff has moved. A lot of stuff has moved. Some stuff is still in the same place. Some of it has been relabeled and all that's fine. But it, well, the one thing that I will say about the, the settings panel now is that it does take some time if you've used Plasma before to kind of get to know where everything's at. And you really do want to take advantage of that searching capability because you're going to need it. I know I did all the time. So let's talk about the underlying stuff because really, yeah, there are a few other minor visual changes here that I could talk about, but honestly, none of that stuff is really all that important. It's basically what you expect from KD Plasma. But the biggest stuff that they've changed is underneath, right? And, and I don't really care about QT6. I know it enables a lot of the stuff that I'm going to talk about, but technologically, I'm not that interested in it. What's big here is the Wayland capability. So I'm a long time skeptic when it comes to Wayland. I've recently only i only recently started to switch myself over to wayland and you know that's a me problem for the most part we all know that matt's a little weird he 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 he, he tends to not transition to things the way other people do it's a little you know it's just i'm, I'm a special little small snowflake in that in that regard but i have talked time blue in the face about my resistance to wayland my transition over to wayland all that stuff but so i don't really need to to go through any of that stuff here again. But I will say this, is that when it comes to desktop environments, up until now, GNOME has been the best implementation of Wayland that I've experienced. And I, when I say best, that's not really saying all that much because I have a lot of complaints about the way GNOME handles scaling and all that stuff. Plasma has been better at scaling and stuff for quite a while now, but because previously, the Wayland experience on KDE was fairly buggy, even on AMD systems. I couldn't really recommend it. Now, it's been fantastic. It's been really, really good across the board with multiple monitors, with a whole bunch of weird, funky KWIN scripts that I've installed, half of which don't work at all. You know, I've been just messing around and tinkering like I normally do, and I haven't managed to break it, right? I have seen a couple a couple crashes from the Wayland session. And previously on a Wayland session, when it crashed, it just shut 
everything down, took you back to SDDM, if you could even get back to SDDM, and you basically had to log back in. This time, it just restarted itself. Like, everything, all my windows stayed exactly in the same place. The bar came back. It was great. It was the best fail on a KD system I've ever seen. It was really, really spectacular. Because on Xorg, when KWIN crashes, you're screwed. <laughs> like, half the time, you're screwed. And, you know, either you're going to have to do a hard reboot, or if, it, if you're lucky, well, you can get to an e a TTY or something. And on the Wayland session previously, again, like I said, you had a lot of times you ended up back at the display manager. Here, it was a fantastic, graceful fail. I can't even remember what caused the failure. It was, it was something to do with maximizing windows or something. I don't even remember. It's been a while. Uh, and that was when KD6 first came out, so I haven't experienced it in quite a bit either. So, a fantastic fail. <laughs> I know it seems weird to be that impressed with it, but... I it, just the fact that it just kind of rebooted and I could continue on, not even rebooted just just the fact that it kind of restarted itself into the previous state and it just you know you could just carry on with what I was I could just carry on with what I was doing is fantastic it was really good so I have had this is the best Wayland experience I've had on a desktop environment ever bar none like it's not even close and that kind of transitions into the stability of plasma six because this is another big one and it's the most ironic part because other people have had so many problems so if you've watched brody if you've watched nick from the linux experiment I, th I think he's talked about it several other linux youtubers have talked about how plasma six is not as stable as they want it to be so there's been this whole global themes erasing home directories and all that stuff i haven't have actually even installed any pl global themes so because i've just been dealing with color schemes lately so I haven't really experienced that, but everybody else that you talk to, or at least most people that you talk to, find that Plasma 6 is still just as buggy as Plasma 5 was. It has quite a few flaws. I've been the complete opposite. This has been the most stable Plasma experience that I've ever experienced, and that's insane. I mean, it's been such a good experience out of the box. Things, you know, other than those few crashes, which again, just managed to come right back up and let me keep going. Everything else has been fantastic. The monitors go to sleep. The, the computer goes into hibernation just like it's supposed to. Bluetooth works, which I always have a problem with Bluetooth on Plasma for some reason. Usually I have problems with the password wallet thing that KD has. Haven't had any of those issues. It hasn't deleted all of my cookies from my browser sessions like it normally does. Usually, because I do a lot of, I've talked about this before, I do a lot of switching between Plasma and window managers. I like I like to switch between them. And usually, I can come into Plasma and Vivaldi or whatever browser that I'm using is still logged into everything. It works just fine. Then I log back into whatever window manager I want to go back to and everything's been deleted. I don't know if I can blame Plasma for that, but that's always been the experience. Didn't happen this time. It's been really, really good. It's also, for whatever reason, usually because of the differences in Polkit, because this obviously uses KDE Polkit and in my Hyperland install, I use GNOME Polkit. Mixing and matching those things, probably not the best idea, but this time... It worked fantastically well. I haven't had any issues like I normally do. So the stability of KD Plasma 6 for me personally has been excellent on both this computer and on my laptop. Now, normally I don't have nearly as many problems on my laptop because most of the problems that I usually experience are because I have multiple monitors. But on both computers, it has just been phenomenally stable. It's actually been really, really good. And I'm so very impressed with it now. I don't know if I'm just lucky. Maybe my karma has finally caught up and I've experienced enough pain over the years with Plasma that I'm just able to reap the rewards of, of that life experience. But I don't know. Maybe it's just me. But for me personally, this has been a very, very stable experience. And that's using the latest up-to-date KD stuff. So to install it on Plasma... To install it on OpenSUSE before it was released for OpenSUSE, I had to install several other repositories, and all that stuff is very bleeding edge. So I get the latest version of literally everything, and that means every time I update, there's like 300 KD dependencies that I have to update. Eventually, I'm going to have to change that because I really don't want to have to put up with that every time I update every four, four days. But you guys get the idea. I'm living on the bleeding edge of Plasma land, and, or at least as bleeding edge as OpenSUSE can get, and it has been just rock steady. It's been so good. 
So overall, you guys have been hearing me glow about Plasma 6 for the last 10 minutes or so. And it's a fantastic update. It's, it's one of their best updates ever. But in traditional matte fashion, I can't go through an entire video without saying some negative things. So here are some things that I didn't really care for. So my first and honestly biggest complaint is going to sound like a really stupid one. But I don't think KD Plasma is customizable enough for me. And I know... When I say that, I'm going to hear a lot of people in the comments thinking, well, Matt, what's going on with you? How are you this insane? Plasma is obviously the most customizable thing in the world, or at least in terms of desktop environments. How could it not be customizable enough for you? Well, in this one area, it really hasn't been as customizable as I'd like it to be. And that is when it comes to the panel. I am very used to bars that I can customize literally every part of. I've been using Hyperland that I use Waybar with that and it's customizable via CSS, which means you, I can literally do anything I want with it as long as I know the CSS to do it. That's awesome. Now, obviously, I'm not expecting that level of customization on a panel, at least outside of XFC, which you can, in fact, customize via CSS. But on Plasma, hey, I'm not sure if that's possible. I didn't even really look into it. But when it comes to customizing the panel in Plasma, there's so much more that I want to do that I just can't do. One of them is rounded corners. Now, someone in the comments section is going to link or try to link to me a, a couple GitHub pages or GitHub projects that allow me to round the corners, even on Wayland. Uh, but I don't want to have to go searching for them, right? I, and, I, and I had a hard time getting those installed and actually up and running. Uh, I did manage it at one point, but it was not a stable experience. So I just kind of in, uninstalled them. So... A lot of the problems that I have with customizability is the fact that a lot of the KWIN scripts that I used to use to customize the panel don't work on Wayland at all. Some of them just don't work on Plasma 6. So eventually I think that that stuff will iron it out. But in terms of like rounded corners, the workspace switcher, uh, let me see if I can actually add this thing. Oh, it's called pager. That's right. It's called the pager. This is what the pager looks like. And it's absolutely effing huge, right? It, it's so so big it's this thing here now you can make it a little smaller uh, just by controlling what it's actually showing you but it's huge like uh, if i want to pay if i want the if i want to know what workspace i'm on i just want the number or the ability to just have the number now you can put the numbers here so if you if i edit configure the pager i can put the the desktop number there and it will actually show me the number but it doesn't get any smaller right <laughs> and i uh, I want it to be smaller, first off, and I don't, I mean, there's just so many things there that I want. Now, I went searching through the widgets for a different pager. As far as I know, there's not one. It's just small little things like that that I want to do but can't. There are several of them It does, that just bother me like that. And, you know, it's fine, but it was those little, little bitty things that I wanted to customize that really bugged me. Now, again... That's the stupidest effing complaint you guys probably have ever heard. I understand. But it was the little things that made me realize that Plasma wasn't really for me. So I just, they kind of added up over time. And that was the first one that I really kind of uh, noticed. Another one is that the, the tiling aspect of, of KDE is not any better. I would, my biggest hope for Plasma 6, my biggest hope outside of better Wayland compatibility, which we got, was better tiling functionality. We didn't get that at all. We still have this nonsense that where you hit shift, shift T, I think it's shift T, maybe it's control T. Yeah, it's control T and you get this nonsense and then, and then if you have a terminal open or something like that and you want to get that into the appropriate place, you press shift and it'll tile in that place, right? So you can choose the the layout and then you have to put the thing in the you have to put your clients in the appropriate position manually then it's not like if i open up another one here it doesn't actually go into the spot that's i want to tile now i know that polonium exists for this reason <laughs> i've always had so many problems with polonium i didn't even bother trying it this time so maybe maybe it's gotten better maybe maybe not i don't know maybe i'll try it again eventually but as of right now i haven't and the the built-in tiling is just why did you guys even bother? That's not good, okay? And it hasn't been good since it came out in 526, okay? Or I think that was when it came out. It just wasn't good then. It wasn't good in 527. It hasn't gotten any better, okay? Now, I understand there are other things that they were worrying about, getting things to Qt6 and getting all the stuff updated for Wayland. I, those are things much more important. But 
hopefully now that they got Wayland up and running fairly well, hopefully now they'll start working on a better tiling mechanism because this right here is just, uh, it's a waste of space. It, I'd, most people who use it, use it alongside polonium and that makes it a little bit useful, but most people just don't use it. Either they don't know it's there or they know it's there, tried it and realized that it's not good. I've made a whole video about the KD plasma tiling before. I'll point you guys to that if you want to hear me rant about it for like 20 minutes. But overall, that was my biggest wish for plasma six and it did not come true. So the last thing that I want to talk about is Wayland itself. So I've already talked about how good this Wayland experience has been, but that doesn't mean that it's perfect. Okay, so I don't, I don't want to go so far as to say that it's perfect because it's not. The portal situation on everything is literally broken. Okay, guys, I don't care if you're using Hyperland, if you're using Sway, you're using Gnome, or you're using KDE. It doesn't matter what you're using. The plasma, the portal situation just isn't as stable as you need it to be. Now, most people not going to bother them because all they use the portal for is getting a picker, a file picker to come up. Those things work. They've nailed that. Good job, guys. For me, the thing that I need to work is the portal to actually allow me to select a monitor to screen capture. Specifically, I'm talking about an OBS. And this is not a specific KDE problem. It also has a, I also have a problem with it in Hyperland. I have a problem with it in Qtile Wayland, where for whatever reason, the portal just for whatever reason will not see one of my main monitors. This one right here, the Scepter Tech Inc. Scepter M32 thing. For whatever reason, I won't see it without me having to restart the portal. For whatever reason, in order for it to see just that monitor, it'll see the other two just fine, but it won't see that monitor without me restarting the portal. And it doesn't matter which portal it is. The KDE portal has the exact same problem as the Hyperland portal, same as the WL Roots portal. You get the idea. So, now, again, this is a special problem for people who use have multiple monitors and weird configurations and who do a lot of video recording, most people aren't going to have this experience probably. But for me, this was my biggest pain for point and has been my biggest pain point on Wayland, no matter what Wayland I'm using. So Plasma did not fix that for me. In fact, it was worse because I haven't been able to figure out what the portal name is since Plasma 6 came out. I've been searching for it. The package name is XDG port xdg-desktop-portal-kde6, but the service name is not that. It's also not just K the KDE version, so I don't know what it's called. I know that there's a way to go searching through the system D services that are running. I haven't managed to do that yet. I'll get there eventually. But my point is, is that this last time logging back into Plasma, I actually had to restart the computer in order to get the portal to actually restart, which is not what you want to do. So. From a Wayland perspective, that's the only complaint that I really have, which is honestly not a bad thing because I've had so many problems over the course of the last two years with Wayland. The fact that that just little one is still all that's really left for me is pretty impressive. So overall, Plasma 6 is very good. It's very good. But I would caution anyone who hasn't upgraded yet. If you haven't upgraded yet, lower your expectations just a tad because it's not a big update. And when I say it's not a big update, I mean in terms of actual features and UI changes. Mostly, it looks basically the same. Mostly, it functions basically the same. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Now, when I say from a user perspective, from a UI perspective, there are other places where it has been a big change. And this is where we need to talk a little bit. So, when they upgraded to everything to Plasma 6 and to Qt6, that means they changed literally every package every package, every single one of them. And if you know anything about Plasma, you know, especially if you're using something like Debian or OpenSUSE, where things are packaged very individually and things aren't like grouped together, you'll know that that's a lot of packages. I've got a lot of packages. I'm talking about over a thousand packages, at least it was for me. Now, some people have a more minimal install and they'll find that number to be a little bit lower, but the idea remains. It was a lot of packages and the upgrade process for people who switched early was not a good one. Now, this is not the fault of Plasma, nor is it the fault of OpenSUSE. It's my fault for wanting to try it early. I wanted to try it before OpenSUSE had it in its main repo. So, my experience upgrading was not a good one. 
And I've heard from other people who have tried to upgrade it, upgrade to it now that it is in the OpenSUSE repositories, and their their experience has also not been a very good one. A lot of times, actually upgrading to Plasma 6 while you're in Plasma 5 will cause the entire update to stop. You get kicked out to the SDDM display manager, and you have to actually do the update over again in some other window manager or desktop environment. So that was the experience for a lot of people even after Plasma was in the OpenSUSE repositories. Now, I don't know what the experience was on other distros. It could have been better. I don't know. The reason why all that was the case is because in the case of OpenSUSE, every Plasma 5 package, if you already had Plasma installed, had to be deleted had to be completely yoinked in order for you to install the Plasma 6 version because every single one of those was a conflicting package. Even if there was no change other than just the name, the old one had to completely go and the new one had to be installed. That's usually not a big deal with other programs because they're usually quite small. You know, they, maybe they have 20 or 30 packages on the high side. When you're talking about a thousand packages or 600 packages or whatever, that can be a big issue. Where it, So... The upgrade process on OpenSUSE was not a good one before it was in the repositories. I've heard that it hasn't been a fantastic one after it's been in the repositories. So what I would recommend if you're going to, to use Plasma 6 is to do one of either two things. One, if you're going to upgrade in place, upgrade from an alternative desktop environment. So either, you know, XFC or a window manager of some kind, just something that is not Plasma 5. I'd highly recommend that just in case chances are you'll probably be fine, but just in case, or probably the better one is just, just nuke and pave and install this thing fresh. I think that you, that you would have a better experience. I know that I would have had a better experience if I were going to stick with plasma to just go ahead and do a fresh install with plasma six on the ISO. It would have been a much better experience because that upgrade process was not an easy one, but overall plasma six really did surprise me because of the stability of it. It wasn't because there were a ton of features, but because it has been so so very stable for me, it has been a pleasant experience, which is again, something that was very surprising for me. So overall Plasma 6, good job guys. I'm really impressed. I know that other people haven't had a good experience, but for me, you get the good old Matt thumbs up. So that's it for this video. If you have thoughts on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear about your experience with Plasma 6. If you've had it, or if you plan on upgrading comments in the comment section below, if you you want to follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey, those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. You can also head on over to the store, which is available at shop.thelinuxcast.org. There, there you'll find hats, t-shirts, hoodies, all sorts of stuff. All the proceeds for that go directly to making more Linux content for you guys. So head on over there, shop.thelinuxcast.org to check that out. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing without you the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now so thank you so very 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 much for your support i truly honestly do appreciate it with like i said just thank you so very much thanks everybody for watching i'll see you next time i hope you have a wonderful week